Ever wondered what's inside that tiny chip on your credit card? You know, the little golden square that somehow makes your payments more secure than the old magnetic strip? Well, it's not just a piece of shiny plastic. It's actually a mini computer. And today we're going to break down what's inside a credit card chip and how it quietly protects your money every time you tap, insert, or swipe right here on History of Simple Things. Let's rewind a bit. Remember when we all used to swipe cards with magnetic stripes? Back then, all your card data was stored in that black strip, completely unencrypted. Every time you swiped, the same data, your card number, expiration, and security code was passed to the terminal. That meant if someone skimmed it once, they could copy it and use it again. Then came EMV chips. EMV stands for EuroPay, MasterCard, and Visa, the three companies that created the standard. These chips were introduced not just for convenience, but as a major upgrade in card security. Instead of just storing your info, they process it. And the difference that makes is huge. So what's inside that little chip embedded in your card? Think of it as a miniaturized computer. Inside the chip is a microprocessor. This is the brain of the chip. It performs cryptographic operations and manages data. Secure memory. This is where your card's data is stored, but not in the same way as a magnetic stripe. Here, it's encrypted and tightly controlled. A tiny operating system. Yes, it even has a basic OS to run the instructions during a transaction. Cryptographic engine. This part is responsible for creating unique codes, also known as cryptograms, for each transaction. It's not just storing data. It's actively computing, verifying, and securing every transaction on the spot. Now let's walk through what happens when you insert your chip card into a reader. Card initialization. The terminal powers the chip through tiny metal contacts on the card. The chip wakes up and starts a secure handshake with the payment terminal. Authentication. The chip proves it's genuine by using digital certificates and cryptographic keys. This ensures the card hasn't been tampered with or cloned. Dynamic data generation. Here's where the magic happens. Instead of sending your actual card data like the magnetic strip did, the chip generates a one-time use code or a cryptogram that represents the transaction. This code is completely different every time you use your card. Even if a hacker somehow intercepted it, it would be useless for the next transaction. Verification and approval. The terminal sends the code, along with some other info, to your bank. The bank uses its own copy of your secret keys to check that everything matches. If it checks out, the transaction is approved and you get your receipt. All of this happens in just a few seconds. So why is all of this more secure? Because of one word, encryption. Unlike magnetic stripes that carry static data, chip cards use dynamic encryption. The chip never sends out your real card number. It sends a unique encrypted transaction code that can't be reused. That makes it practically useless for criminals trying to skim or clone your card. Also, the chip can detect anomalies, like if it's being read by an unusual terminal or if someone tries to physically tamper with it. In some cases, the chip can even self-destruct by wiping its memory if it detects a major security threat. Yeah, mini spy computer stuff. You've probably noticed that many cards now support tap to pay. That's thanks to NFC or near field communication. The chip inside your card can communicate wirelessly with a payment terminal using short range radio waves. The process is almost identical to the chip insert method, except it's even faster. 
When you tap your card, the NFC chip still generates a one-time cryptographic code. It's just transmitted wirelessly instead of through physical contact. Despite some people's concerns, tap to pay is very secure because the same dynamic encryption and verification systems are still in play. It's easy to think it's all about the card and the reader, but the real muscle behind a chip card transaction comes from the back-end systems. When the chip sends that one-time cryptogram, the bank has to decrypt and verify it in real time. That's why your card issuer stores a secure version of your chip's data on their servers. They match the code, check for fraud, confirm the transaction, and send a response, all in under a second. In addition to your bank, the card network, Visa, MasterCard, or others, is like the communication bridge making sure the transaction flows smoothly between the store, the bank, and back. You might have noticed that sometimes you insert your card and sign, while other times you're asked to enter a PIN. Both methods use the chip, but the way you authenticate yourself differs. With chip and signature, you prove your identity with a signature. With chip and PIN, you enter a personal code, just like an ATM. Chip and PIN is generally considered more secure because it's harder to fake a PIN than a signature. In some countries like the UK or Australia, chip and PIN is the norm. In the US, we're still mostly using chip and signature, though that's slowly changing. Even though chip cards are already high-tech, things are still evolving. Some of the latest cards include biometric authentication, like fingerprint sensors built right into the chip. Others are being embedded with dynamic CVVs. That little three-digit number on the back of your card changes every few hours, thanks to a tiny e-ink screen. Eventually, chip cards may merge more tightly with smartphones, wearables, and even digital IDs, making your wallet even thinner, and your payments even faster and safer. So the next time you insert or tap your credit card, take a moment to appreciate that you're holding a tiny, encrypted, self-defending computer in your hand. It's doing a whole lot of work behind the scenes, checking identities, crunching codes, and securing your money all in the blink of an eye. The chip may be small, but the tech behind it is huge. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.